Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. We usually think about inverters as digital logic circuits. You input a logical zero, we get a logical one out, and vice versa. Or you could call these false or true or whatever you want. Nowadays, because of power and scaling issues, these logical inverters are usually implemented using CMOS technology. And you don't necessarily have to think about them as digital logic circuits. You could treat them as high gain inverting analog amplifiers. And in fact, there were some synthesizers that used CMOS inverters basically as op amps and in inverting configurations for buffers in their voltage controlled filters and in other places. This includes the EDP WASP and the EDP NAT. National Semiconductor has application note 88, which is entirely about all of these tricks you can play using CMOS inverters as if they're analog amplifiers. In this video, I'm going to explore CMOS inverters using an open source tool set created by my colleague Jennifer Hassler and her students. The tool set uses Scilab and Xcos. You can replicate my work here by going to Jennifer Hassler's FPAA virtual machine tool site and downloading an Ubuntu image that you can run in VirtualBox. So here's my CMOS inverter simulation. I have a PMOS transistor and an NMOS transistor. The PMOS transistor has the Balkan source connected to a 2.5 volt voltage rail and then the bulk and the source for the NMOS transistor are connected to ground. The output is basically the two drains connected together, and I put an ammeter here to measure the current and output that to a, a workspace variable that we can look at if we want to, but I won't worry about that here. The voltmeters here let me measure the voltages of the input, which is sent to the gates of the transistors and the output, and those voltage measurements are sent to an XY scope plot. In order to make the Medellica simulator happy, I had to put a small one picofarad capacitor here at the output. The square terminals represent implicit nodes that are part of the Medellica framework, and these represent voltages and currents that need to satisfy the various associated Kirchhoff laws, and the connections with the triangles represent more generic Xcos data. The voltage block here turns the generic Exco style data of a ramp that's going from 0 to 2.5 volts into a Medellica style voltage. So for our first simulation, I'm going to let the parameters of the transistors be the same as shown here. And let's press play. And I get something that looks like what we expect. We have this really, 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 really steep slope here in the middle, and then it levels off at the extremes. Let's see what happens if I set the kappa parameter for the PMOS to 1 and the kappa parameter for the NMOS to 0 0.5. So if I run simulation now, ah, it looked like the slope moved to the right. Let's flip that around and set the kappa of the NMOS to 1 and the kappa of the PMOS to 0 0.5. And actually, the simulation is unhappy. Let's see if I need to increase the capacitance to make it happy. Ah, that did make it happy, and it moved to the left. Let me set both of these to 1. Earlier, I had them both at 0 0.7. We'll let 1 be our new baseline. OK, there we go. Now let's play a game where we change the thresholds. Suppose I put the PMOS threshold up at 800 millivolts. OK, that effectively moved things to the left. OK, let me put that back to 0 0.3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the NMOS threshold to 0 0.8. I don't think that's realistic. But we do see the expected effect that moved the slope over to the right. All right, let me put those back at 0 0.3. Let me first rerun things with the same parameters just to establish a baseline in our head. OK, there we go. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the PMOS threshold current and double it to 100 nanoamps and see what that does. This corresponds with changing the relative W over L ratios. OK, so that moved it to the right. Let's see. Let me put it back at 50. 
run that again so now everything's the same. That moved it back to the middle. Now let me set the threshold current for the NMOS transistor to 100. It should say 100 nanoamps instead of 50 nanoamps. So now that one's doubled. And we see that it moved the slope to the left. Also, it looks like it's smushed really kind of down to the lower left here. Let me play around with that a little bit. Let's see. Let me put this down to 50. And let me put this back up to 100 and just take a look at that again. Did that move kind of up to the upper right a bit more? Let me push this up even further. How about 200? Yeah, I think it's not just moving to the right. It's also kind of moving this up, lifting it up down here a little bit. It kind of has a gentler slope down here now, but it's sharper up here where it hits the transition. What if I push this absurdly far? Ah, there we go. That's interesting. And flipping it around the other direction, if I set this back to 50. And again, this isn't realistic. I'm just having fun here. If I put a 1,000 in here. Yeah. Okay, that is interesting, isn't it?